Hi everyone and welcome back to this video series on cryptocurrency, advanced transactions and scripting. Introduction. In the previous chapter, we introduced the basic elements of Bitcoin transactions and looked at the most common type of transaction script, the P2PKH script. In this chapter, we will look at more advanced scripting and how we can use it to build transactions with complex conditions. First, we will look at multi-signature scripts. Next, we will examine the second most common transaction script, pay to script hash, which opens up a whole world of complex scripts. Then we will examine new script operators that add a time dimension to Bitcoin through time locks. Multi-signature. Multi-signature scripts set a condition where n public keys are recorded in the script and the least m of those must provide signatures to unlock the funds. This is also known as an m and n scheme where n is the total number of keys and m is the threshold of signatures required for validation. For example, a two of three multi-signature is one where three public keys are listed as potential signers. At least two of those must be used to create signatures for a valid transaction to spend the funds. At this time, standard multi-signature scripts are limited to at most 15 listed public keys, meaning you can do anything from a one of one to a 15 of 15 multi-signature or any combination within that range. The limitation of 15 listed keys might be lifted by the time this book is published. So check the standard function to see what is currently accepted by the network. The general form of a looking, locking script setting an M of N multi-signature condition is M public key 1, public key 2, public key N, N check multi-IS, where the N is the total number of listed public keys and N is the threshold of required signatures to spend the output. A login script setting, uh, setting a 2 of 3 multi-signature condition looks like this. Two public key A, public key B, public key C, three check multi TIS. The preceding locking script can be satisfied with an unlocking script containing two pairs of signatures, the public keys signature B, signature C, or any combination of two signatures from the private keys corresponding to the three listed public keys. Um, the two scripts together would form a combined validation script signature B, signature C, public key A, public key B, public key C, three check multi sig. When executed, this combined script will evaluate to true if and only if the unlocking script matches the conditions set by the locking script. In this case, the condition is whether the unlocking script has a valid signature from the two private keys that correspond to two of the three public keys set at an encumbrance. A bug in multi, sorry, a bug in check multi-sig execution. There is a bug in check multi-sig execution that requires a slight workaround. When check multi-sig executes, it should consume m plus n plus two items on the stack as parameters. However, due to the bug, check multi-sig will pop an extra value or one value more than expected. Let's look at this in greater detail. 
using the previous validation example signature B, signature C2, public key A, public key B, public key C3, check multisig. First, check multisig pops the top item which is N, in this example 3, then it pops N items which are the public keys that can sign in this example public keys A, B and C then it pops one item which is M the quorum how many signatures are needed here M equals 2 at this point check multisig should pop in the final M items which are the signatures to see if they are valid however unfortunately a bug in the implementation causes check multisig to pop one more item m plus one total than it should the extra item is disregarded when checking the signatures so it has no direct effect on check multisig itself however an extra value must be present because if it is not present when check multisig attempts to pop on an empty stack it will cause a stack error and script failure marking the transaction as invalid because the extra item is disregarded it can be anything but um, customarily zero is used because this bug become became part of the consensus rules it must now be a replication forever therefore the correct script validation would look like this zero signature b signature c2 public key a public key b public key c3 check multisig thus the unlocking script actually used is multisig is not signature b signature c but instead zero signature b signature c from now on, if you see a multi-sig unlocking script, you could expect to see an extra zero in the beginning whose only purpose is as a workaround to a bug that accidentally became a consensus rule. Pay to script hash p2 sh. A while back we introduced Mohammed an electronics importer based in Dubai. Mohammed's company used Bitcoin multi-signature feature extensively for its corporate accounts. Multi-signature scripts are one of the most common uses of Bitcoin's advanced scripting capabilities and are a very powerful feature. Mohammed's company uses a multi-signature script for all customer payments knowing known in account terms as accounts receivable or AR. With the multi-signature scheme any payments made by customers are locked in such a way that they require at least two signatures to release for Mohammed and one of his partners or from his attorney who has a backup key a multi-signature scheme like that offers corporate governance controls to protect against theft, embezzlement or loss. The resulting script is quite long and looks like this to Mohammed's public key, partner one public key, partner two public key, partner three public key, attorney public key, five check multi TIS. Although multi-signature scripts are a powerful feature they are cumbersome to use. Given the preceding script, Mohammed would have to continue would have to communicate this script to every customer prior to payment. Each customer would have to use a special Bitcoin wallet software with the ability to create custom transaction scripts, and each customer would have to understand how to create a transaction using custom scripts. Furthermore, the resulting transaction will be about five times larger than a simple payment transaction. Because the script contains very long public keys, 
the burden of that extra large transaction would be borne by the customer in the form of fees. Finally, a large transaction script like this would be carried in the UTXO set in RAM and every full node until it was spent. All of these issues make using complex locking scripts difficult in practice. P2SH was developed to resolve these practical difficulties to make the use of complex scripts as easy as a payment to a Bitcoin address. With P2SH payments, the complex locking script is replaced with its digital fingerprint um, address with P2SH payments. The complex locking script is replaced with its digital fingerprint, a cryptographic hash. When a transaction attempting to spend the UTXO is presented later, it must contain a script that matches the hash in addition to the unlocking script. In simple terms, P2SH means pay to a script matching this hash a script um, that will be presented later with this output is spent um, in P2SH transactions. The locking script that is replaced by a hash is referred to as the redeem script because it is presented to the system as redemption time rather than a locking script. Table 71 shows the script without P2SH and table 72 shows the script encoded with P2SH. So I'm going to be here today for this video. If you like listening, please consider like, sharing and subscribing. Thank you.